Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and I had a request to talk about the Continental United merger. And, oh boy, what a can of worms that is. Well, uh, United and Continental merged October 1st, 2010, or that was the start of it. It's a long process, integrating seniority lists and things like that. And I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the whole thing. Now, first of all, in the comments section, I want to let you know that Scurrilous Miscreant and You Incredible Bastard, uh, if you want to refer to my comments, they're, none of those are hyphenated. It's just spaces, okay? So I want to get that clear. Because, uh, first of all, this is my opinion on it from the United side, and even that opinion varies all over the place. Um, I'm sure they're continental people, too. But the, the main thing about a merger, a successful merger is... It's only successful if everybody is unhappy, <laughs> okay? Um, and I would never want to work on a union merger committee, no way. And there have been some bad mergers in the past history, and I'm sure you all know of them and can reference them. And, of course, there are some people that say, oh, well, we're merging with them. We would like to just staple uh, their pilots to the bottom of ours. Well, wait till you have a job action or strike and guess where the list of scabs is going to come from. Because if, if you screw people over, you're just asking for trouble in, you know, in life, working environment, and anything. Not good. So you got to be reasonable. Now, okay, everybody will have things to complain about. Of course, seniority, that's the key. That's what airplanes you uh, bid that's what routes you fly that's what your pay is so that's paramount i mean seniority is absolutely paramount okay you want to know my complaint my complaint was uh, i started with united airlines back in 79 got promptly furloughed uh, so i got four and a half years of space in there well i've got guys who were hired after i was hired Okay, I didn't have the continuous service, but these people were hired after I was hired. And I know it's a more complicated formula than this. Uh, but so uh, essentially, I had people junior to me that were now senior to me. So you can say, yeah, that's that's not going to be good. And that's going to tick you off. Um, I was actually worse on the flight attendant side because um, on the flight attendant side, you know, seniority is everything. You, the, the trips you fly again, but uh, the senior flights are flown by the senior fl uh, flight attendants. And those flights, of course, are the international ones. And I guess there were a lot of continental flight attendants who came over and had a lot more seniority than our flight attendants felt they should have. So, okay, that that's another issue. But anyway, uh, there were a lot of issues like that. Now, I retired in 2015. This started in 2010. Um, you know, it was a long time integrating everything, bringing it together. And I can't say that I really suffered any damage. My ending seniority number was, I think, about the same as it would have been anyway, um, ir disregardlessly. That, that's my thought. If you're going to kill a word, totally murder it. You know, people say irregardless is not a word. So I go ir disregardlessly. You know, okay, I'm digressing, I know. Anyway, uh, if you're going to murder a word, absolutely kill the damn thing. So anyway, okay, uh, where was I? I've totally forgotten. Well, anyway, as, as far as seniority, okay, that's a key. It's important. And I think people are unhappy on both sides. And you'll probably, I'll probably get a lot of comments on this about whatever. But, oh, uh, I don't think it affected me. Uh, I don't know for sure because basically I didn't look. I had five years less to go. Uh, you know, you can put yourself in a bad mood. Uh, you know, my son, a little bit different issue. He had some people that um, uh, he felt got a seniority jump on him that wasn't necessarily appropriate, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, but anyway, you know, the longer you got to go. But still, he is going to be single digits for many years uh, in his final years. Uh, he's going to be below 10 for quite a few years. So uh, you certainly can't complain on that. And he got hired at 23, you know. So uh, anybody who gets hired at 23 really doesn't have any gripe. So that's the first part is seniority on the integration. And that is probably the most difficult task and, and doesn't go the best. But, you know, uh, I think people are unhappy on both sides, so it probably worked out well. Well, you know, United Airlines, that's our old livery way back in the 60s. And uh, this is a picture I took of a United Airlines uh, aircraft flying into Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Two airlines flew into, actually, Iowa City at the time. We had DC-3s. Yeah, I'm old. DC-3s and um, 
Ozark F-27s flying in there. And uh, they also flew into uh, Cedar Rapids. Now, in Cedar Rapids, we had United and American. And I one time flew on American flight. And uh, uh, the co-pilot, I think, make a, made a very bad landing. So the one flight I was on United was a good landing. So that's why I liked United better. You know, isn't that just unbelievable logic? No, I, 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 I like United. And the other thing was I was leaving Edwards Air Force Base when the letter saying uh, come in and interview with America and came in and I was already going to United. So that, that's the other part of the uh, thing there. But anyway, uh, <coughs> I'm digressing all over the place here. But that's United livery. This was the livery when I got hired, um, and I kind of actually like this uh, this coloration. I thought that was quite pretty, except uh, we got a lot of people who like the uh, the tulip there design, they call it. Well, that was supposed to actually be a W for Western when good old Ferris took over and he did the Allegis thing and was trying to do hotels and rental cars and everything, and that just that just didn't work out very well at all. And uh, Ferris is one of my least favorite CEOs. I think... You know, Continental had some really good management, and United Management now, the last couple of guys, they're doing a pretty good job. So I, I think I'm fairly happy with them. Uh, but Continental's always had some fairly good management, although they've had a little bit of a uh, not-the-best history, too, with strikes uh, also. And, of course, here is the tennis shoe uh, livery. I didn't like that very much. Now, Continental. Yeah, that's not bad. Golden tail and stuff like that. I wonder how that paint held up. You know, gold paint is kind of difficult, but that, that's not looking too bad. And then, of course, okay, we're merger. Well, they, they settled on this. So we went around and I guess we painted a bunch of tails. So we had the Continental with that tail. And we had the United with that tail. So they eventually ended up being this United with the tail. Now, my retirement picture has a picture of uh, my 777 with that tail. I know some people who uh, said, I'm not having that tail. So they had pictures that had the old United uh, uh, emblems on the tail. Okay, fine. You know, it's what I was flying. I, I was happy with it. I wasn't going to be that particular about it. But not, let's talk about something else that's uh, really important here. That is pay. Now, this can be good and bad. Now, United had a history of working conditions. Uh, we wanted to have good layovers. You know, we wanted to have nice hotels. We wanted to have plenty of days off. I guess we had a big golf contingency and things like that. So we had a lot of people uh, that, that uh, didn't care so much about pay. And, uh, of course, that was back when pay was fairly decent. Uh, and then it, it took a lot of hits uh, back when I was coming in with deregulation, of course. Continental was going for pay. And boy, did they come in with all sorts of formulas for making extra pay. You had, um, uh, you could get double, even triple pay if they were really short of people. Um, they called it, and it slipped my mind right now what, what the, uh, uh, the type of pay they called it. It'll come after I get done with this. But anyway, uh, you could get extra pay. In fact, I was a line check airman. That's also part of the story here. I was a line check airman. And I would have co-pilots who were making more than I was making as captain on the airplane because they were picking up ad pay. That's what I think they called it. Yeah, uh, you would get, you know, we need this trip and we'll pay you extra for it. And, you know, I, I started to kind of enjoy that, you know, because I didn't play golf. So I, I go, you know, yeah, I, OK, nice hotel room, which we had anyway. Uh, pay me a little extra. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. That's the, that's the one thing I liked. Uh, as far as I was concerned about the Continental merger was I, I liked the, the deal that they really knew how to get paid. <laughs> That's one thing they really did well. And, uh, boy, I'd like to stay on because some, uh, some of the pays people have been picking up and stuff like that. In, in one case, there was an instance where we had an airplane divert into Winnipeg, a 777. And this captain, he was a United captain. He was very notorious for being a real pain in the posterior and being very difficult to work with. And um, he was insisting he wasn't going to take the flight on. Uh, it was going to Shanghai. So, okay, they, they call me up, and I'm doing an a, a IOE, uh, initial operating experience, to Shanghai next week. And they said, hey, we're calling you about your China trip. And I go, yeah, that's next week. And they go, no, we, we've got one tomorrow. I was actually... Um, on the employee bus coming in from a trip, and I said, uh, "We we got this uh, this trip. We need uh, we need a captain to fly it, and we're short, and uh, we'll pay you an extra. I think it was five grand or something like that uh, to fly this trip." And I go, "Yeah, 
that's not bad. So I did it. And we got a bunch of really junior flight attendants who are now going to go to, to Shanghai. And we got on the plane, and I took a plane just with me, the, the crew, and the flight attendants up to Winnipeg. And Winnipeg is not a great airport for a big airplane like a 777. Let me tell you, they, they don't handle it well. And I'm digressing. They don't handle it well. They had the one jetway, and it, it's a small airport. The taxiways are narrow. It was really a challenge uh, uh, to keep all the wheels where they should be. And the, the funny thing was we get there and we just have a good time um, uh, on the layover the night before and we're taking it out. And I announced we are inaugurating Winnipeg to Shanghai service. But it was funny. Uh, we get all the plane, uh, all the people on board. They, they didn't have security really set up to process them very quickly. So that took a long time. But we get everybody on board. The crew pushes us back disconnects the tow bar, goes forward, gives me the salute and release, and then the guy gets out with his camera taking a picture because I don't think they saw many 777s. But okay, I'm digressing all over the place here. But anyway, um, that's uh, one of the nice parts of uh, ad pay and stuff like that. So I, I enjoyed that. And uh, that's, you know, they say, what do you miss being retired? Well, I miss the people. I certainly miss the paycheck because uh, once you get senior, that's some pretty darn e easy money. But let me tell you a little bit about kind of the difference in philosophy between the two companies, at least that I noticed at the stage I was at. Okay, at United Airlines, you had to know what every single switch did. You had to go deep. Uh, they would start at one end of the panel and go through the whole thing until they got to the end. And you better be able to, uh, to tell every single switch position, things like that. Well, Continental had a little different attitude. It was much looser. In fact, towards the end of my career, I virtually didn't have to study for the check ride. Okay, I got 13 years on the airplane. I should know it by then. Okay, right? But, you know, a lot of times what United would do is they would get in there and, okay, you've lost two generators. This circuit breaker's pop. You're on standby power. What do you do here? You know, you have to go into all these details. And that's something, not, something you fortunately don't do every day so you had to review that well by the time they got done with all their mandatory briefing items in the uh, the checklist there was like 15 minutes for an oral and it was usually a non-event so that whole thing was was just a it was just a piece of cake and a non-event so like i said oh i don't have the top of my head there oh well duck down a little bit uh like, I set in on a check ride. Of course, I'm retired, so I don't have to answer anything anyway. But it's a lot more relaxed environment. And, uh, you know, in the, uh, the simulator, it was quite relaxed. And here's my uh, uh, final takeoff. There's the uh, delivery with United now. Uh, out of Maui, the uh, water cannon salute and the water lay. But the one thing, I was a line check airman on uh, the 777. And uh, I would give check rides, and and the the Continental crews they were just as good as the United crews. They they flew very well and they knew what they were doing. But when I started, at, but but there's a pet peeve of me. Okay, I'm an old guy. Uh, there there's this little pet peeve I had, and I would have it when I would uh, when I would be training people. Uh, Continental tended to really use the autopilot extensively. I mean, it was take off, gear up. We haven't even started the flaps up, and the autopilot comes on. And, okay, well, I'm giving the guy a check ride. You know, that's not the way I like to fly. I think you should hand fly more. That's my personal, uh, you know, deal. Um, but uh, they really put the autopilot on. Well, I'm training a guy to fly the airplane now. Okay, this is a different environment where you're training somebody to operate the airplane. So, um you know, I got a, I got a co-pilot there, and he does the takeoff, and he calls for gear up. I put the gear up, and he punches the autopilot on. And I go, and I punch the autopilot off. And he goes, what? what? It, and he punches it back on. I go, I click it off. And I go, no, 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 no. I know, and I've seen it in flight test. I know that this airplane will, the autopilot on this airplane will do a magnificent job of flying the airplane. It will just do a perfect job. I don't know that you can fly worth a damn. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't need to watch the autopilot fly. You're going to fly, and you're going to fly it up uh, to cruise altitude. So I want to make sure you can fly. And then when we get ready to come in, you're going to fly it down from cruise altitude, and we're going to fly in certain uh, degraded flight, uh, you know, uh, 
flight management modes just to make sure that you can actually fly the aircraft. So that was probably my the the biggest thing, uh, the biggest issue that um, I had was that people would uh, overuse the autopilot. I think that uh, degradates skill. Um, you know, I used to tell people, you know, a good pilot can type himself out of a bad situation. Oh, and and uh, it's I was a line check airman. They're now line check pilots. Not going to go there. Okay, but it's now LCP, not LCA. If there's any confusion on that for anybody watching. Okay, but that's my thoughts. Um, everybody's unhappy with seniority. I think they did a good thing with the pay. Some people who like working conditions may not feel as well on that. And I think there's somewhat of a degradation of flying skills um, that the Continental Pilots are bringing to the game. But, uh, you know, uh, that is what it is. And there's, uh, you know, the good old FAA, of course, will handle all those problems and keep everyone safe, right? I'm, I'm, glad, we, uh, I'm glad we feel good about that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Those are my personal thoughts. And remember, none of those horrible words are uh, hyphenated. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, found it interesting.